Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm working on my 2020 F250 Power Stroke, and I have a leaky slip yoke seal. So this is the transfer case slip yoke drive shaft. So this seal is leaking apparently because I painted this. That's what the dealership said. And they wanted to charge me like $550 to replace this seal. So screw that, I'm gonna teach you how to replace this seal and you can take this video and you can apply it to just about any four wheel drive truck out there. So let's get started. All right, so let's go over the tools you're gonna to need for this job. Obviously you're gonna need this seal and for my truck of 2020, this is the part number. Jack stand, pipe for added torque, breaker bar, a variety of sockets, 3 8 drive and half inch drive, a 12 point 12 millimeter socket, a couple different breaker bars, Loctite, a paint marker, flashlight, paper towel, syringe to fill up the transfer case, some uh, axle lubricant, seal puller, gloves, hammer, Mercon LV, and uh, you're just gonna need a bunch of different tricks to get this job done. First things first, chalk your front tires. And also, go in the truck and apply the emergency brake. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna start where this drive shaft bolts to the rear differential. So I'm gonna take a marking instrument and I'm just gonna mark where this should line up when we're all finished. So I have a nice white line there. Next thing I'm gonna do is take my 12 millimeter socket and this is a 12 point socket. Very important that you use a 12 point here, whatever you have, but these are 12 points. So I'm gonna start removing each of these fasteners one by one. All right, so a little tech tip, you are gonna need a breaker bar for this. Little 3 8 one inch ratchet. It's not gonna be enough. You're gonna need like a, a two foot breaker bar, half inch drive, but make sure that you're still using a 12 point socket. So uh, another tech tip that I have that I just figured this out. I mean, it's really no secret, but. So I was able to get three of the easier fasteners off. This one, this one, and this one. But the one up in between the DEF tank and the bed of the truck, I was not able to get enough leverage on. So pretty simple, all you do is put the truck in neutral. Uh, move your truck forward, maybe four inches, push the truck forward, and uh, then you're able to have the drive, sha drive shaft rotate down, and now I have easy access to that fastener that I wasn't able to get to earlier. So with any luck, we should be able to break this guy loose here now. And I just felt it give way a little bit. No dramatic crack with this one, but. All right, so we have all our fasteners loose. At this point, now you wanna take your jack stand, and this jack stand is gonna be placed underneath the axle, axle back here, so when this drops, the jack stand will, in fact, catch it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the rest of these fasteners now. It should take a minute or two. All right, so we have the drive shaft supported with the jack stand. Now, I really, I should just be able to tap this a little bit and it should break loose, but uh, I don't know if there's some corrosion or just it was kind of painted stuck from the factory, but when I tap this, it's not breaking apart. So in that case, I'm just gonna utilize a pry bar, try and pry this sucker off. Moved a little bit there. There we go, okay. So now she's broke free, supported by this jack stand. So I'm gonna lower the jack stand down. Slide this jack stand down. All right, that was the hard part. Now we can go up in the front by the transfer case and uh, we'll pull the drive shaft out and then we'll replace the seal. We're getting there. Now the reason the dealership denied this is a warranty repair was because I painted this shaft. So I'm gonna take some sandpaper and I'm gonna remove some of the paint. But I'm looking at this thing I've been sanding a little bit here. I can see how much the rust sticks out. So I, I still think that's a bunch of nonsense, but we're just gonna try and get this a little bit smoother to hopefully ensure that I don't have to do this again in another year or two. 
All right, now that I got that sanded down, I'm gonna clean up the area a little bit with some brake parts. Clean. This is actually starting fluid, so I'm gonna spray this down. Just wipe it down a little bit. Get some of this crud out of here. A little bit of a cleaner working surface going on here. Because we wanna ensure that we don't get any contaminants in our transfer case here, so cleaner this is, the better. All right, so now that I have this area cleaned up, I have the rear side of the, uh, the drive shaft supported. I also have a little catch bucket underneath this seal in case some fluid comes out. I'm simply gonna take this drive shaft. I'm gonna kinda note the orientation so when I go to put it back, I can put it back the same. But I'm just gonna slide this out very carefully. A little side to side wiggle helps. There we are. And I'm gonna leave this right here. That's actually okay right there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to remove this seal and I want to be very careful about how I do this because I don't want to damage anything. Uh, you definitely don't want to come in contact with these splines up here. I do have the seal puller, puller so I'm going to think about this for a second here and try and come up with the best method to pull this seal out of here. So I've studied this for a little while now and if you take your puller and you try and come in here on the side, you may score this spline shaft a little bit. So I, I really don't know what the best way to do this is. There's probably a special tool that Ford makes that I don't have. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in from the side right here and I'm just gonna carefully dig my way in and just start pulling this thing apart piece by piece. Alright, so here's what I'm thinking I'm going to try. I'm going to take a roll of paper towel, kind of wrap it along the shaft like that. I'm going to take my pry bar tool, come in here like this, ensuring that I don't scratch the housing. We're going to try and pull out. Oh yeah. This actually is working. Oh, beautiful. Get my catch bucket. Yeah, that worked out very well. So the paper towel protected the splines on the shaft. And with this tool, I'll show you where I hooked on. So with this tool, there's actually like a metal ring in the middle of this, uh, this seal. So I just came in here like so. And I don't know if you can see, you can actually see a little bulge right there where this hook really dug in, but this was the proper tool. Uh, no scoring or damage to the housing. Just when you're doing this, just be careful with your seal puller that you don't come in here and hook this housing because that would not be good. Don't want to damage that aluminum. So I'm going to get a clean paper towel in a moment here and I'm just going to clean this up. Okay. Very nice. I'm just going to stick my head up here and take a quick peek. Ford wanted $550 for this repair. Go F yourself, Ford. All right, it's a bit of a mess down here, but I am ready to install the new seal. So here's the new seal. And uh, I guess the question is, how am I gonna drive it on? Well, first things first, I'm just gonna take a little bit of axle grease and I'm gonna lubricate this to ensure that uh, this slides on nice and easy. A little bit of lube. So I guess the question is, how am I going to press that on? Well, I don't have a socket big enough to go over this, and I don't have probably the special tool from Ford to get that sucker on there. So let me show you what I do have. So you know that industrial plastic wrap? Well, I have a roll of that stuff, and the cardboard is just a little... Well, it'll work. It's about the right diameter to punch this in, and the nice thing about the cardboard is it's not going to damage the gasket, so... Just a round piece of cardboard. Uh, and then I'm also going to be using, this is a shim from the clutch packs in a Ford 8.8 .8 differential. So that's just, just going to spread my or, uh, spread my striking force out over this seal. And just a ball peen hammer. So I'm going to just carefully go around in a circle here. And uh, I can see this thing's pressing in pretty nice so far. Just trying to do this evenly. 
going to take this off, take a quick look. Yep, so we're about halfway there. That's just about exactly where it was before. Okay, awesome. So now the question, do you lubricate these splines or not? I'm not sure. I know on my old 05 F-150, I lubricated these splines, and I think it's a good idea to lubricate these, so... I mean, is it gonna hurt anything? I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, right? I mean, otherwise it's just spline on spline. I definitely think it's a, not a bad idea to lubricate these. So you know what I'm gonna do? The inside of this slip yoke shaft, criticize me if you want, but I'm just gonna take some of this high temperature wheel bearing grease and I'm just gonna put a light bit of lubrication on the inside here. All right, so now I'm ready to reinstall this slip yoke back into the housing and I'm gonna try and get it lined up right, but it might not be lined up right. We will find out once we get to the back. There we go. She started, I noticed a little back and forth wig wiggling helps. Almost lost a finger there, no big deal. All right, this looks good up here, so I'm gonna go to the back now and see if my bolt holes line up. All right, we're on the home stretch here. So what I'm looking for now is that white paint marker mark that I made on the uh, the drive shaft, or well, the uh, the differential side of this connection and the drive shaft half. I see that the lines matching up right here, so I know these two bolt holes are supposed to line up. And if I take this shaft and uh, put it in its place, it's look, looking like everything's just about lining up perfect. So I know this is uh, just about ready to be bolted up. So. I am going to use some Loctite. I did not see Loctite on these fast fasteners from the factory. However, there was a, a bit of rust and corrosion that I guess was uh, kind of holding them on together. But I'm just going to use some blue Loctite. Figure it's a, a good idea. Just a little tab, a little dab. So we'll go ahead and start putting these fasteners in one by one. Alright, so the question is, what do you torque these fasteners down to? Now, I went to the parts department, the parts department couldn't give me an answer, they told me to go to the service department to get that answer, and there was no chance I was going back to the service department. So according to my research online, I know Rough Country sells a replacement drive shaft for when you put a lift kit in certain trucks. And the torque spec that Rough Country specifies for these fasteners is 75 foot-pounds, which I think that makes sense. I think I torque my lugs to 150 foot-pounds to 75 foot-pounds for a 12-point socket, uh, 12 millimeter. I, I think that, that makes sense. And additionally, we have the blue Loctite in here, so I'm feeling pretty confident about that. So we'll go ahead and torque these in a star pattern. All right, so guys and gals, I think I made a small mistake. I'm not going to correct this mistake because I'm too far into this now. Uh, but I just want to notify you what I did wrong what I believe I did wrong in case you had to do the same thing. So I'm taking a look at this seal and I actually noticed that there's a white dot up here. I'll try and get you a better shot. So you see that white dot up there? There's a little hole next to that white dot and I believe that's a weep hole. I put that on the top and I believe that's supposed to be on the bottom and I think, you know, of course I, I don't have access to forward service tech uh, information, but I believe that weep hole is supposed to be down here uh, in case any water gets in this seal. That way it can weep out right there. So I suppose I could always put a hole right there, but I don't think I'm going to have any water intrusion in here. And I do maintain this vehicle uh, very well, so I will be changing out the fluid in this transfer case when it is time. Alright, so the final thing we need to do is we need to fill up this transfer case to its fill mark. So this is the four-wheel drive actuator. And behind this black piece, there is a plug, and that plug says fill. And I did confirm this in the owner's manual that this is the proper location. So I'm going to remove this fill, fill plug. And I do have a catch pan down here in case this is already full, but I imagine we are going to need to add a little bit of fluid. Checking the back of the cap. Just going to clean off the back of the cap, but what we need to do is we need to take our Mercon LV and we need to get it into this transfer case. Now, my method 
there's a lot of methods out there, but what I'd use is I use just a, uh, what would you call this, like a syringe with just a flexible hose. So I'm just going to draw out of this bottle and we're going to put it in that fill hole just until fluid starts coming out. At that point we know the transfer case is full and this job is complete. See I'm getting that fresh flow there so I know we are definitely filled up. We will reinstall this plug. We like to go counterclockwise until I hear a click and I go forward. I don't have the torque spec for this plug. It doesn't need much. I'm gonna stop right there. If I had to guess, maybe maybe 20 foot pounds is what I put on it. Something like that. You know, it's already at the fill line, so this is just ensuring that you know nothing gets out. Now, if you want, you could clean up. The, uh, the leaky oil you have on your transfer case. However, I live in the Northeast and I actually like to leave this oil on here. I'm not going to take uh, brake parts cleaner and clean this up. The only reason I would clean this off is if I was trying to determine if I found a leak. Uh, or if there was a significant amount on the housing. But, you know, I'm able to uh, remove all the loose drippy stuff and I'm going to leave the rest of this on here. Because this is actually corrosion inhibitor helps to prevent corrosion so I'm gonna leave this right on here well, that's it for this job this is a good repair I'm gonna check the torque on those uh, bolts later on this week and that's it for today's video thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one